Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Two Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd Two Monkey. It's just us two to start off this podcast because Sony and Marvel decided to release the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer right after we finish recording, right on time. So we have to do the emergency cold, cold opening. You like that? Doubling up on the cold, freezing and opening. Look at that, and mm. talk about this hot. It's like trailer. Doctor Strange's place now. It's got the Norse faith. The North Face jacket on, which is a nice touch. Yeah. I mean, Wizard's got to stay warm, too. Right. You know, I mean, there's probably a spell, right? Make me hotter. Expecto Patronum. Rub the hands again. <laughs> well, yeah, so... Expecto Patronum. I honestly think, now that I'm, like, thinking back on it, if this was intentional, like, for them to keep waiting, have the hype build and build and build and build, because this trailer is fucking doing numbers right now. It is doing incredible numbers, yeah. So, might be kind of genius on Sony. Or they just felt the pressure from the leak, and they're like, oh, God. Wait, the movie's coming out in how many days? <laughs> oh, okay, we should probably release this now. But, yeah, I saw the leak. We talk about it later in the podcast, which will probably be funny now that we actually seen the trailer. But, yeah, I kind of got the same, like... Even though I really couldn't see it, I kind of like kind of knew what the trailer entailed, but I couldn't see the finer details. And uh, this trailer is, I think it was the perfect trailer because we talked about it in the past how we didn't want them to give everything away in terms of Toby, Andrew, and uh, Tom Holland all being on the same screen as Spider-Man together. I liked a little bit because we, we knew uh, Alfred Molina, he just flat out said he was going to be in it so it's like all right put him in the trailer they didn't show defoe but obviously we got the little uh skeleton bomb there so like i like that they didn't give too much it's only the first trailer so maybe the next one they kind of blow their load but for what we got here i I enjoyed it i really hope they keep garfield and toby until the movie even though it's the worst kept secret in hollywood all of these cameos and appearances are badly kept secrets yeah even in this trailer you could see hints at the lizard you could see obviously the lightning for electro Mm -hmm. so those characters hiding the garfield villains a bit because the toby mcguire villains are more iconic right so when you put them in you you get the audience thinking what's going on here is this a reboot is this the same movies that, that i grew up as kids so i think for hardcore fans it's awesome because it confirms what we already knew and for casual fans it's going to build more interest in what this exactly is Right. And seeing Doctor Strange, he's become a familiar face, Benedict Cumberbatch, an A-list actor. It looks like he's going to have a bigger role in this movie than I previously thought. I thought it was going to be more of a Ragnarok type appearance. You go to Strange, Strange does something, helps you out, or in this case, fucks it up, and then you're on your own, kid. You have to figure this out. Because a lot of the action sequences that are shown in the trailer are very Doctor Strange, the movie-esque. Yeah, he's there. The dimensions and things are going crazy, and I don't even know how to describe it, but, you know, like the the... The curvy buildings. Yeah, yeah. The dimensions almost collapsing yeah. in on themselves and shit. Him I'm not, on the train in the desert. I'm not sure if I like, though, that being the jump start of, like, Peter obviously getting his identity uh, revealed by uh, Mysterio at the end of Far From Home. So, obviously, he needs to deal with that in the beginning of this film. And I do like that aspect of it. But him going to Doctor Strange to cast a spell that no one knows who he is anymore. And, like, him talking during the spell causes the multiverse. A little goofy. Yeah. I mean, especially because, like... That man, Doctor Strange, is just reckless. Yeah, he's feeling himself. Yeah. <laughs> Does the spell behind Wong's back? First of all, Wong, always cutting out. Yeah. I, I don't want to be here when shit goes down. Maybe that's how he ends up in Shang-Chi. Well, the heater, like, obviously broke. So <laughs> Yeah, he's got to take care of that. I'm getting out of there, too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just seems, like, a little odd, especially, like, when we got the events in Loki and in WandaVision that seemed just so much cooler or, like, more uh, believable in this world uh, events that would cause some rippling or some disturbance in the multiverse. Right, you almost have to headcanon it. Doctor Strange is arrogant. He would do this. He wants to show off. I don't know if those are great excuses for what happens, but that that was my initial thought as well. This is too easy. Yeah. It's too much of a fuck up. But that that's writing, right? <laughs> that's how these superhero movies be at times. So how can we just get to this point, right? What's the, what's the easiest way? Right, but it seems kind of shoehorned in. Yeah, no, it does. To go, like, oh, well, we need a reason for the multiverse, so Peter needs his identity to be restored. And then he's talking during the spell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead of occurring more naturally, I feel like. Right. Especially when, I don't know, what it, I guess WandaVision and Loki, those, like, because they, they don't seem tied together now. 
it seems like three very separate occurrences, but three events that could be considered like nexus level events. Right. Well, I, I think this issue gets resolved. It's more so just pulling back the curtain again. Yeah. But the stuff that happened in Loki is still happening behind the scenes. Things that they don't even realize. Kang the Conqueror is now the emperor of all the, the multiverses, but still they don't realize that because they haven't encountered him. Mm-hmm. But I think this, for Doctor Strange and not so much Spider-Man, but Doctor Strange I think will be more of a focal point as Phase 4 really starts to ramp up. Because he says in this one, we know so little about the multiverse. So him not being aware of Kang, him not being aware of the events of Loki, I guess makes sense. Maybe this is his introduction into what the multiverse is. So it sets him up with the foundation to tackle those bigger problems moving forward. But it it definitely felt like a shoehorned in plot device. Mm -hmm. It did. But at the end of the day, you see Doc Ock and you see the skeleton. Oh, no, I'm not, like, complaining too much. Right. I just found that to be a little... It's weird when you get a a plot, not a plot hole, but a plot critique of that size in a trailer, you know? Yeah. And it might might flow more organically within the movie itself, right? There might be uh, more explanation. Maybe, like, Peter's identity being out makes it, for some reason would create even more of a disturbance so this is something Doctor Strange has to do rather than just doing a favor for his little friend he was on that spaceship for like a month with yeah, very much is just a favor for a buddy yeah very corrupt I'm not supposed to be doing that but you know you were in Infinity War I was we shared that funny moment I wonder what happens if people don't know I guess well who really knows right now MJ Tony but he's dead Ned Ned Aunt May well everyone all the Avengers he takes his mask off all right. the time yeah, and it seems like he's he's regretting that mm-hmm. because he was able to confide in these characters like Aunt May, like Zendaya, like yeah. Ned. Yeah. So, so I, I guess there's some regret. He doesn't realize that it's just going to be a one-size-fits-all solution, hmm. which is interesting. Uh, Spider-Man grappling with, should I have the identity out there? Should I not? Daredevil looks like he's in this trailer. Just throwing that in. He's was, got a lawyer. It was an arm. <laughs> It's uh, now a silhouette of a man <laughs> with hair. Daredevil. It's fucking Ben Affleck. Maybe. Dude, maybe. Seriously. No. Disney has so much pull that if they want to get crazy like that with every other Marvel movie that's ever existed, that's a call. That's a phone call. Bring J-Lo. Yeah. She could be Electra. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking, right? Or Jennifer Garner. <laughs> I don't know how that would work out nice too well. Nice little reunion. <laughs> yeah. Um, A-Rod's another variant Daredevil. (laughs) Uh, I wonder if there's like a a variant timeline where like the Jets are good. (laughs) I doubt that. You got the Belichick stayed. (laughs) You have to do real deep. Brady. Real deep for that. They no the 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 TVA fucking will wipe that right away. Like (laughs) nope, we can't allow this. No, this this will just set off. We can't have that many New Yorkers be happy. (laughs) Right, the Jets and Giants are are winning at times. No way. Yeah, that's a cataclysmic event. (laughs) So, (sighs) I'm excited to see what the villains think about all of this. Right, Doc Ock. Last time we saw him. Yeah, I wonder if it is. He didn't die as much as Green Goblin died. His his death was a bit more up in the air. Where yeah, you could write it as he was sent somewhere else. Like he obviously knows that's Peter Parker, right? So, well, I, I wonder if he'll he'll be like, I know what the multiverse is. You know, like, this isn't surprising or he's like, to me. He just has really good deduction skills. He's like, oh, he has webs, so he might be Peter Parker. <laughs> um, but he's I th- like Miles Morales. I think, uh, yeah, that's another thing. I wonder if this is Toby's Doc Ock. Yeah, or if this is just a multiverse Doc Ock. That who was happens with to Tom be Holland's. Alfred Molina, who was with Tom Holland as well. Yeah. So he knows that him as Peter Parker. Like, these are variants of the Toby versions that just happen to be the same ones that... Or who who interacted with Tom Holland's Spider-Man in their own ver- verse or whatever. There is a, a six-month gap that we still haven't seen of Spider-Man from being bitten to Civil War. So within that gap, there could have been some supervillains. Maybe one. Maybe there was a relationship with the Doc Ock. Maybe he recognizes. I, I don't think Green Goblin will be the the same because he he died, died. Yeah. Stabbed through the gut. So it's hard to write that as, you know, he was sent somewhere else. Or I, I think he'll be just a totally different version of that character. Hans. Oh, God, please no. <laughs> please no. Go back. Go back, Doctor Strange. What did you do? 
That actually, I wouldn't hate that. I want all the boys. But if Toby does come, then I would want that to be Toby's villain. Right. Yeah. You want Toby to have the pass with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to rewatch these movies, man. I can't wait. That's going to be fun. Actually, leading yeah. up, rewatching all the Spider Man. A good wait. trailer, man. Built the hype, like you said. Them keeping it under wraps. Did you get any reaction from Marissa? I was thinking about her. I was hoping she was okay. Uh, Marissa doesn't. Marissa's becoming a bit uh, iffy on Spider Man. MCU Spider Man. Really? Yeah, she's one of those. I- I'm not going to say she goes as far as the Iron Boy crowd, mm-hmm. but she doesn't like Far From Home because of that. Well, I mean, I saw I saw a tweet actually today. It was like when Alfred Molina was like, "Hello, Peter." It's like, wow, finally Spider-Man gets a villain that's not obsessed with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. It is a good point. Right, yeah, Mysterio and Vulture both just slighted by Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go beat up his <laughs> his ward. <laughs> now his villains are the other Spider-Man villains. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> just give him Venom. Just give him Tom Hardy's Venom. You so, think he pops up in this? What about, um, whatchamacallit, 70s show, Eric? What's his real name? Eric Andre? <laughs> no. <laughs> Venom from Spider-Man 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why can't I think of his name? I can never remember his name either. I see him right now. It's not Topher Grace, right? It is Topher Topher Grace. Topher Grace, yeah, yeah. No, I would love that too. <laughs> they just all gang up on him. Yeah. Nobody likes you. Sandman, uh, I'm pretty sure, is confirmed. Or it's heavily rumored that Sandman's coming back. I like Sandman. I did like Sandman. Well, too. they said they're going to do like a syner- multiversal Sinister Stick, so... Goblin, Ock, Sandman, Electro, um, Lizard. Lizard. And the other rumored one is Rhino. Rhino. It's, it's, it's none of Holland's villains. <laughs> Jesus Christ. MCU Spider-Man. Get your own villain. Three from Toby's and then three from Garfield. Rhino sucked. He was in the, the end of the movie for like 10 seconds. No, he was horrible. Paul Giamatti, though. Maybe they'll they'll get it right this time. Mm. Marvel's got a good track record of that. I wonder if we are going to get a second trailer. I don't know. It's cutting it close. I'm sure we will, but I wonder if it's just going to be like a recut of what we've already seen. Maybe a little bit more details or anything new. Yeah, I, I think what we'll see in the, the subsequent trailers is more villains. Okay. I think we'll see more shots of Jamie Foxx's Electro. I think we'll see the Lizard. I really think you need to hide those other Spider-Men. Because even yes. though it would be a great selling point, the villains is enough. And in, Spider-Man's enough. Yeah. And once that word of mouth gets building, like all the Spider-Men are in this, people are going to go out and see it. That's that's the marketing you'll, you'll want. Well, let's check right now. Let's see. Spider-Man. No Way Home trailer. I mean, it's already got like... On YouTube? Yeah. In 11 hours, it has 8.5 million views. So like... And the tweet was massive. Yeah. And that's like another 12 million right there. Yeah. The, the Twitter, that, that gets the most views now. Uh, yeah, it really like does. That does because it spreads so fast. But you know what gets a lot of views too? Facebook. Yeah. So when you factor in all the views, I'm sure it's it's got to be over 100 million, maybe close. There's still a large portion of this population that doesn't like, most of like their trailers are consumed via like just regular commercials on TV. Right. And But most of the marketing now is all internet based. So I wonder if we do get some TV spots coming up. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna get some TV spots. That's <laughs> that's where they might put in Toby or Garfield, <laughs> or they may hint at them. There may be a silhouette, uh, somebody in the shadows. Who is that? Maybe a voice that hardcore fans could put together, but casual fans are just more confused. Then maybe they go on the internet. What was the voice? It's Toby. What? Toby's gonna be in this? I remember those movies from when I was ten. Mm. Haven't seen a movie since. <laughs> But overall, good trailer. Yeah, I'm excited. I think not too much, not too little. Perfect perfect amount. Well, this is a great cold opening because it's Teddy watching a fake trailer that he thought was the real one. Oh, yeah, that and was funny. And he's all upset about it. Yeah. So let's throw it to Teddy. What is this? Oh, fuck, this is a Green Goblin. <laughs> I got duped again. <laughs> yeah, it's a fake trailer. I got duped. This guy Teddy think he got the leak. You got... <laughs> <laughs> it was made like it was a leak. I'll yeah, give him credit for that. It was a fan trailer recorded on somebody's phone. <laughs> I always hit, I get I get hit with those like once once every couple months. It'll be on YouTube and it'll be like doing trailer. Even before like before the trailer dropped, I'm like, oh shit, when did this come out? <laughs> it's just not even it. <laughs> so that's a skill, man. People make good fan trailers. I get <clears throat> the fan art gets me every single time. Some of it looks like a lot of the like stuff the, I the companies s- made it. A lot of the stuff I want to like I see like I want to believe. 
So that helps yeah. a lot too. I just won't dig any deeper. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's happening. I kind of <laughs> hope this trailer was similar to the movie though. Because the, the fake it'll, trailer, it'll be sick. <laughs> Yeah, you're watching it. It's like, oh, yeah, William Dafoe. Oh, he has an age in 20 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> looks oh, just he looks like good. he did in Spider-Man 1. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Suit Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, and we're here today with Aaron, the Nerd Suit Monkey, and Teddy, and we are here to talk about the world of Hollywood. We've got some reviews to talk about for some new Marvel movies. We've got some Marvel leaks. Apparently, we missed out on those. And we've got some some Dune news, U.S. weekend box office, all that stuff that we talk about on a Tuesday podcast. Aaron, Teddy, how you guys doing? Doing, doing good. good. Great. No, we'll get to the first story here. We have <laughs> Shang-Chi. Early reviews are overwhelmingly positive. Before we get into that, listen to the pod on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, of course. Follow us on social media at NerdSoup, BoSoup, NerdSoup, Monkey, Teddy, Nerd Soup. That's the best place to follow us if you want a question answered on this podcast. Yeah. Be immortalized. Have your jersey hanging in the nerd suit rafters. Yeah. You should start putting, first. like, printing out the the questions and putting them up on the wall. What wall? The wall we have here. What whiteboard? No, I mean just like put it on the ceiling. The wall to the best our left questions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we should do that. Like plaque them. Start framing yeah. questions. Framing the tweets. I don't know, I'm gonna take pictures of it. Show the fans. Our love. Wait, you don't think this is a good idea? I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Makes no sense. We need an ideas box like in Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah, like... If you thought it was a bad idea, why don't you say watching, that? right? How great is it? I didn't. Oh, you, you thought it was a good idea? No, he he thought it. I didn't... Well, I'm saying I know I you're was being facetious. On the fence. All right. Facetious. You know facetious, you don't know pretentious. He, he <laughs> 100%... Bank that one. Like, no, I always use that word. No, he does. He, he, yeah. he banked that I got, one. I got, <laughs> I got shit on for not only pretentious means. I'm going to find a big word and oh, use right, it. Right. I got that word in my bag. I can't really say it, but my, I know what My it, favorite, though, is in the comments. They're like, oh, Bo and Aaron. It sounds like they don't know what pretentious means either. Oh, <laughs> so, someone's on my side? Okay. As if we weren't just playing into the whole, you don't know it, so we won't tell you. But you did tell you me You took that to heart, huh? People shit on your <laughs> vocabulary skills. Pisses me off, man. First, I, the sound I, system. They're mm. like, oh, you need it. Not the sound system, but the theater <laughs> that setup. That definitely got you running to your skin. Well, he wrote me a whole paragraph. Took, oh. me to, took me to task about this whole thing. I love banking big words I just hear and then using them later on. It's so great. Oh, it's the same thing if I uh, if I listen to 92.3, like ESPN, or if I watch Sports Center before I go out. I'll just oh, you like, use all the sports takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like that's, a, you that's a great move. Steaks. <laughs> I love that. You're a take stealer. I don't. I haven't watched Man. sports in like two years. I just, I just recycle all, yeah. all, all takes. <laughs> yeah, that's how I talk football. I haven't watched a full football game in seven years. Yeah, you oddly know a lot about football, but every time I ask you if you're gonna watch the game, you never watch. A lot of ESPN, man. They love football on that channel. By the way, Zach Wilson looking pretty good. He did look good. So did Cam and Mac Jones. Uh, the summer's not even over. <laughs> One more week. I know. <laughs> Football starts. This soon, guy, man. Mike Greenberg, was like, "I'm in love with Zach Wilson." I'm like, "You guys just don't." <laughs> he said learn. that. Greenberg, Green, you said that because he made one pass. It's like the ball got out of there quick. That's ballsy. Dude, did you see that? that? It got out quick. That's a hot take from Greeny. <laughs> I mean, the the franchises that lose all the time, they're like that. I'm well, sorry, see, I mean, the Giants have kind of gotten like that with Daniel Jones. No Everyone... in between. Either Zach Wilson's going to be like the next Aaron Rodgers, or he's going to be a complete fucking nightmare. When it, wait, when have you guys ever gotten the next Aaron Rodgers? Not yet. I don't think it, I don't think it's an either Sanchez or. Sanchez was almost the next Aaron Rodgers. Or close enough. For you you don't remember almost the Mark next Sanchez too well, do you? <laughs> I mean, he had a good year. The defense had a good couple of years. And no, he 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 managed well, but just don't bring up the past, okay? He would have been a fucking superstar. Guys All right, first fumble. story here. Oh, I can't wait for Sam Donald to win the fucking MVP this year. <laughs> <laughs> Shang-Chi is coming out next week, September 3rd, right? That's next week? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Next Thursday. That's a Thursday yeah. night movie. Hopefully Ted will come out. I don't know. You guys going? to get him out of the house. I'd like to go. I'd like yeah, to see going. it. The reviews are overwhelmingly positive so far. 93, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought it was 84. Because then he tweet like, something about the other 14%. No, it went up. Oh, wow. Yeah, he tweeted too soon. <laughs> tweeted too soon. That yeah, really he made happens. a funny joke about his parents were going to be like, what happened to the other 14%? Now it's at 93, <laughs> and they're going to be like, what happened to the other 7%? <laughs> he made that joke? Yeah, he made That's that hilarious. joke. <laughs> That's shocking. Usually it goes down. 
Well, I think it was sometimes they'll post like 10 reviews and then 8 out of the 10, but then the next 30 will be all positive, you know? Mm. So, yeah, no, it's uh, it's up in the 90s. They're saying that the action, the hand-to-hand combat is incredible. That's what I wanted from this movie, especially because of the character in the comics. He's supposed to be known as the greatest martial artist in the MCU. They're saying that it's epic as well, that it's not just the street combat that's cool, that the second half it gets more mystical and more epic, like I said. And apparently Tony Leung, the uh, the villain who's playing Shang Li's father, uh, Shang-Chi's father, steals the show. Nice. I so always like Marvel's that. really been on a good trend here with, with villains. I feel like that's what Marvel's missing out on, a nice hand-to-hand combat movie. Yeah, that, you know? that's what I want, dude. They, they shared that one clip where he was fighting like prime Jackie Chan, where he takes off the jacket and he wraps them up yeah, and then he puts the jacket on mid-punch. It just looked awesome. That's what I want from this movie the most. Just to enjoy that. It's going to be nice. Not not like, not all CGI, like fantastic. Like, oh, uh, well, no. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Not all CGI and fantastical. Is it, yeah, that, I was going to say fantastical, but I didn't want to get shit on No, fantastical. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> yeah. Teddy, honestly, just let, let it fly. Just now because it's if, you <laughs> nail, <laughs> if you nail it, you, you like you seem good, and if you don't, it makes for like a great right. segment of it's us. It's either great. Yeah, well, then great I don't want to hear the I don't want to hear the loud abrupt laugh from Aaron, and then I get embarrassed, <laughs> and then I don't talk for the rest of the podcast. When you start like make, even when you do for now on, I'm still gonna laugh just to <laughs> keep you in check. No matter what it is, you could say it right accurately. Yeah, yeah. he's just gonna be belly laughing. Just to fuck with you. You dug yourself in a hole. But no, there's I no did, escaping. Yeah. Dude, some critics are saying this is one of their favorite MCU movies. People are putting it top 10, top 5. Seen a wow. lot of top 5s. I can go for a good top 10 right now. Yeah. Breaking the top 10, that's tough. It's getting tougher. Top 5, I don't think that can happen. Well, it gets harder because, like, top 5 is obviously like, unbreakable. With the amount of movies that have happened, but it's like the just I know it's hard to break into like those especially after like years of watching these movies and kind of them being set in stone like Iron Man and Avengers for me have been set there for a while even even now it's been like what six years five years since Guardians you know even longer since seven yeah Winter Soldier it's like these have been like staples for a while so unless it's like Endgame or Ragnarok recently not many have kind of just been broke able to broken break into like the top five so we were talking crazy about wandavision for a time when we were like episode five six of wandavision people were like this is top five this is top I mean, one it warranted that though it yeah was, it was good enough no it, di- it definitely warranted those discussions i think the ending for a lot of people kept it more in the 10 to 15 range it's also very new though you know and yeah different. yeah the hype the hype surrounding it was so much fun because like you said it was first new thing from marvel in a while right yeah pre pre-covid First TV or show. Post-COVID. Yeah, that is, it, it is funny to think about that drought we had with Marvel. Mm-hmm. There was just nothing for all of 2020, right? Especially nice, it's nice to see how, how new Shang-Chi is too in the Marvel Universe and that it's doing very well. And like, it's not, it's not the, like you said, original, it's not a new Iron Man, it's not a new Thor or Avengers, and it's getting this kind of recognition and it's nice to see. Doesn't always happen. Yeah. A lot of the times they seem, they seem to strike gold with their origin movies, but Look at Black Widow. That's not an origin movie, but it's a solo movie. Usually Marvel doesn't... I mean, most of these movies end up in the high 80s, 90s on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes obviously doesn't really matter that much, but it's an indication of how critics are liking it, and then fans are probably going to like it as well. Usually fans and critics kind of walk lockstep with the MCU. It's not the case with every movie, but this is just a good sign. Being different, that's awesome, right? Low to the ground. Oh, yeah. New character. Apparently, some of the elements in this movie are, are kind of unique to the MCU. So, those are all things that I think not only MCU fans can get excited about, but film fans in general. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it, especially now, like this run we're going to have towards the end of the year with this Eternals and Spider Man. It's, it's fun. It's further in the universe. A lot of questions that we've been having now, which seems like much longer, and it is much longer because of COVID and because everything got keep kept getting delayed it's just like we've had these burning questions for a while so it's good that maybe not with this movie maybe a little bit more of Eternals but definitely with uh Far From Home that No Way Home yeah No No Way Way Home Home. that um we're gonna start really kicking off this next phase and getting an idea of what's to come yeah it seems weird now right now it's like we're finally getting to start to MCU again like all the movies are coming back (laughs) this is sick yeah that's what's missing you know nature's healing Marvel (laughs) We're going to steamroll Phase 5 right now. We're 4, wherever we're in. 
And this, obviously, it's interesting to see with the box office. We talked about it, like, last week, I think, that this is not going to be a Disney premiere access film. It's going to be only theater. So I think that's one of the things I'm most most interested in seeing because it can really, depending on what happens with this movie and if it is, if it does trend towards what Marvel's used to, then we could see maybe a return to just straight cinema or movies playing in the cinemas like we had pre-COVID. And if it's the opposite effect, maybe it does change. Maybe they do go back. So it's a nice little uh, litmus test for what's to come. When it comes to that. Dude, Eternals looks sick. Uh, a new trailer was pretty cool. I oh, like. yeah. We didn't even talk about that. Is Eternals going to be like... I, I think Eternals is going to be like the first real test for a box office movie. I think this Pre- would do Post-COVID. Be- I think this would do better regardless. COVID, now COVID. What? Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi would do yeah. better than Eternals? Yeah, definitely. No, I don't think so. Really? I th- Eternals is going to be insane. I think it's going to be good, but I don't think it just has the same appeal. I think it's more of like, I don't want to say Inhumans, because Inhumans was obviously a show and it was fucking terrible, but like, it's just a lot at you at once. It's all these new characters yeah. all at once. It doesn't yeah, really true. connect too much to Marvel. This is just a solo Marvel property with one character that looks so different and it brings a different element. I think that, especially too with like, uh, I think with just Asian box office in general, I think it's going to do very well as well. Because this is the first movie with a prominent uh, Asian actor as the lead, I believe, right? In, in the, the MCU. MCU. Yeah, yeah. So I think just for that case, I think that's it's going to do pretty well in those other markets. So I, I would see this. You think it has 100? 100 million? Yeah. Like all together? No. Opening. Oh. Um, with everything. With- UK pretty easily. I thought you were going to have some, a better defense for Eternals. I thought you were going to throw down the gauntlet here. I wish, a I, little, uh, I, wish bet, I could have. A little bet action. Eternals probably has more star power in terms of, like, I now think. this man's making your argument for you. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's why I didn't say anything. <laughs> and it does I, have my, my, my statement speaks for itself. Chloe like Academy, really Award, Academy Award winner threw that up in there in that trailer. That's always a nice mm. thing. You want to do a bet? I'll do a bet. You want to bet on it? With does better? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 100%. What's the bet going to be? I don't know. we got to figure out what the. By the end of the pop, I'll get the bet going. <laughs> we got to marinate on it. Yeah. It's just got to pop into our heads. All right. Well, Ted's got Eternals. You've got Shang Chi. We'll think of the stakes later. Okay. I like that. Yeah, the but- trailer was great. If the trailer is any indication of what the movie is going to look like, then damn, this is going to be an epic. Dude, who was that guy with like the six eyes? In Eternals? Yeah. That was. I don't know. I, I, was it? What was? Was, was the, the thing cel- fighting Angelina Jolie? It's one of the Celestials. It was like yeah, it was like I had her so. like wrapped up. Yeah, Celestial. We had someone tweet us, uh, what's like a memorable moment that you watch like over and over again on YouTube? And I went through all of them, like watched all of them. <laughs> it was like, like, it was the end game fight, the, uh, that, the fight with Thanos and the Hulk. I watched a shit ton. Uh, Captain America barging the, uh, barging the ship with all of his high kicks. Yeah. That's great. Moment. That opened. I was actually, yeah. yeah. So I was actually watching. Was- it's different from Marvel, but I was watching Arrival the other day, and that ending sequence, like those, like those flashes through like the different times. I've I've seen it like I don't know, probably a handful of times. I just always get chills watching that. That's the mark of a great movie. I I love Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, let's talk about Dune now. That's yeah, it was transition. like uh, how did, how did you transition from? Because he was watching about movies, uh, movie scenes that like are memorable, like gives you like yeah, gives you chills. chills, and like. I, I, I was just sitting there like in awe, just with chills, for a sustained amount of time. Sustained chills. There's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. You should watch a Bob Ross video. <laughs> Get chills the entire mo- <laughs> entire video. The man's voice. It's like time for a big tree. No, you're gonna mess it up. Oh, you made it better. This is the first time like I noticed. I don't know if like probably many people have noticed it too, but the shot of the hentapod or thing with Amy yeah your Adams tweet was ridiculous me. what do you mean you don't even care if dune is good you just want a shot like that with the chalamet <laughs> and the worm yeah <laughs> that's not a trade-off that i'd want how else is like chalamet's just sitting there just so the movie's absolutely vision. pitiful but you get yeah. that one shot you're gonna be in the i'll be like he did it again he did the thing <laughs> he did it <laughs> that didn't he bill new strikes again he's got his famous shot you know what you know what worm in the corner of the room oh i take a worm in the corner of the room yeah i think now at this point he's got to do it if he hasn't, they better fucking delay it and <laughs> put it in. Those worms are big as fuck, man. 
It's a mini worm. Well, the Eternals trailer, we didn't really talk about it. We got off topic. But it was a good trailer. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to put it on the topics, the time codes. I'm definitely excited for it. I All thought right. the line at the end was funny with Madden. And uh, he's like, what is this made of? Vibranium? <laughs> Ikea fall collection. Richard Madden. He looks, he looks, I was noticing this too. He looks a lot like Sebastian Stan. I could see it. Yeah. It's kind of like looking like, oh, wow. He's a movie star, man. I hope this is, I mean, yeah. obviously people know him from Game of Thrones, but he kind of got the sunny treatment where he, he didn't, you know, he got capped. What does he do? He like, deserves more. Obviously bodyguard. He does more. He was good in Rocket Man. He had that year. No, the bodyguard yeah. year was the Richard Richard Madden year. Well, Rocket Man is like a year or two later. I think maybe. No, no, same year. Same I'm pretty year. sure same year. I think he, he needs to find him. for bodyguard. I think he needs to find himself in a James Bond role. Yeah, th- those were the role. rumors for a long time that the Broccoli's, the Broccoli family, wanted Richard Madden. I think he'd be a fantastic Me James too. Bond. There were so many moments in Bodyguard where I'm like, "That's fucking Bond." Even and his the voice. Scottish accent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Glad they're letting him do the Scottish. I uh, did. You guys watch Reminiscence, the Hugh Jackman movie? I was yeah. gonna watch it last night, it but horrible. I put on. Uh, <laughs> I actually watched Solaris, so that was actually a better choice. <laughs> What'd you watch? Solaris. Oh, the Russian movie? No, the George Clooney one. Oh, okay. No, no it's the <laughs> Russian one. Oh, Man, you just got him so pumped. No, Wait, it was a Russian one? Yeah. Oh. George Clooney one's actually not bad. <laughs> I was looking for like a sci-fi. I passed 2001 and I was like, eh, let me, let me Did go you manage Solaris. to stay awake? Because it's a hard movie to stay awake for. It really is. It's very, it's very, very slow and long. I think... Um, it makes 2001 look like Fast and Furious. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, I actually felt kind of guilty because I did pause to watch the leaked Spider Man trailer. I'm like, damn, this is. <laughs> Wait, you watched it too? What? The leaked trailer? I, it was like the, like the smallest. It was just awful. And I felt it's guilty. Only, only one I didn't well, watch. Is Solaris on HBO Max? Yeah. Nice. HBO Max. It just got all the hits. Place. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking amazing. It's considered one of the best sci fi movies of all time for good reason, but. It takes a while. I think once they're like on the ship and like things start getting a little out there, it's like, ooh. How long is it? This is good. I think it's like two hours and 45 minutes, but it's like, it's not it's one of those awesome. two hour 45 minutes and the credits, like it ends at 2.30 and the credits play for 50 minutes. No. It goes like <laughs> up to the brink. I remember I had to pause it for something at like 2.30 and I'm like, oh, so this is going to end like in like a minute. No, it just took it <laughs> up all that time. Two forty six. They did yeah. the fast roll in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just zip. Well, I don't like a lot of those. Like a lot of foreign movies do it right in the beginning. I know this one mm-hmm. did for a while. I'd like I'd like to bring that back. Credits in the beginning, mm-hmm. like a nice credit roll. That's why I was very upset with Twilight. I've been watching Twilight. No great opening credit sequences. You'd think for a fantasy movie. Oh, Twilight. Yes. Ah. Uh, Wait. Hmm. Like what? Pattinson's Twilight? No, um... What are you talking Tarkovsky's. about? Tarkovsky's. Stephanie Myers. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the George Clooney Twilight. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I know Clooney was in that. How many are you up to? Uh, you just one? I've managed to get through the first three. Oh, Holy yeah. Moses. That now It's just heating up now. Nah, yeah, now we're getting to... They just killed Bryce Dallas Howard. Rip. Nice recast there. Uh, looks like Bella and Edward are getting married. Jacob... First of all, the movie's got it's so. Let's move on to the next story. Actually, I got a lot of problems with Twilight. <laughs> what do you like? You like, you like Jacob? No, I'm Team Charlie. But if I had to, ch- uh, was anybody really Team Jacob? I can't imagine anybody. Wait, was. the dad? Guys, a do we? Yeah, that's disgusting. Why? Why is it disgusting? Because the I'm teams team are split on who they want to bang Bella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, then I'm Team Carla. <laughs> Somebody said Carlisle and Bella have more sexual attention when he's wrapping her hand than her and Edward ever had in any movie. <laughs> What's the guy's name? I'm team, uh, who's the friend, like, in the beginning of the go to school with? Oh. Uh, yeah, the Mike? dweeb. Or that something. threw up in the bathroom when she went out to the movies with her, uh, him and Jacob? I'm team him. Okay. He seems like a, like just a good guy. He's throwing up in the bathroom because he's sick, and Jacob's like, what a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start calling people that when they get sick of the movies. Bro, the hype around Taylor Lautner when Twilight was coming out was unreal. Well, all three of them—they became superstars. Yeah. But it, it's cool how well, I mean, Tyler didn't really become a superstar. He tried at yeah. the time; he was a superstar, yeah. but he never did anything after besides Grown Ups. Speaking of Grown Ups, Denis Villeneuve is working on the script for Dune too. Look at that transition. How did that tie in? 
I have no idea, but yeah, he's been <laughs> releasing a lot of tidbits of information about what Dune 2 is going to entail, saying that Zendaya's character Chani is going to be the main protagonist, and that the sequel is going to be told through her perspective, which is a little different from the books, but anyone who's read the books will know that in the second half she has a larger role, and it kind of makes sense. You know, there are other changes he's making to the adaptation that, it's an adaptation, right? It's his vision, yeah. it's how he sees the books. So he's working on that script. He said that there's a good chance the movie's going to be made as long as Dune doesn't flop completely. We don't know what a complete flop <laughs> yeah, is. nowadays, for them, at least. Right. You hope that it can make a bit of a profit. Well, it's on HBO. If you go to HBO Max right now, it's still on there as, like, same-day release. It is. No, that's what they're doing, right? Well, yeah. that, those were his other comments. He He's wasn't a- too happy about that. Whoa, wait. Yeah. Whoa, wait. Dune is going to HBO Max when it comes out in the theaters? As of, as of now. Ooh. That's not going to be good. Well, if it does well on the streaming service, then they can hang on to that. Yeah, but are, are, you're still not making money on it, though, right? As long as we get two at this point, I don't care. If, it, yeah, if, it, right. if HBO yeah, is under this impression it, yeah. that the movie's streaming well on their service means that they'll make another one, then whatever's going to get <laughs> yeah. us to two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but if they're going to hold that against him, that would be so yeah. fucked up. That's also likely. But they say, hey, your movie didn't do well in box office. It didn't do well in the streaming service. What gives? I just, just get me to two. I hate, like, looking at past performances, like, oh, well, Blade Runner didn't do well, so maybe this won't do well. Because different movies elicit different responses and interests from general audiences. So I think with the hype, like, I don't think it's going to do, like, I don't think his past is going to have anything to do with this movie. It's all about marketing, all about, like, how well it ingrains itself with, like, the movie-going conscious of the, the general audience, but... I think like he, a lot of people think that seem uh, fuck. A lot of people think to seem like his movies don't do well just because they point to Blade Runner. But like, what was Arrival's budget? Arrival one. It made like two hundred and something office. million. Yeah. Uh, that was a, that was Sicario a big hit. did well, right? Yep. I think like Blade Runner is really the only one. Yeah. And that was also his biggest movie to date. It was on a sequel to a movie that not a lot of people. Prisoners did pretty fucking well too, I, considering. Yeah, I think like, it did. Yeah. So, it's just all, it's all about, like, the people. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's is Dune promoted, grabbing man. the average moviegoer? Is Dune grabbing, is it something where a lot of people, though, are like, oh, here's this movie I heard so much about. Oh, it's right on my TV? That's cool. I'm going to watch it there. You know what? They should hire Ryan. They don't Reynolds. know Denis. They don't know like Denis Villeneuve yeah, and facts. the scope of this movie and like how they're championing it being played on the biggest screen possible. Uh, my mother doesn't know that. She watched A Quiet Place Two last night. She told me she really liked it, but she didn't. You probably didn't even know when it came out or if it came out. She's like, oh, it's on, it's on my TV. I'm gonna watch it. And that's how I think a lot of people just generally are gonna watch movies. You gotta start taking advantage of social media. It's at the tip of your hands, man. You can get this movie promoted just of a, of a, a click of a mouse and get the millions of eyes. That's what I'm frustrated by. They have this star-studded cast, and it feels like there's not a coordinated marketing push between all of them. Yeah. With the Marvel movies, you always see it with whoever's going to appear with the Avengers movies. They, they do all them. their press runs. It's difficult, obviously, now because the world is still so... Not, I don't even know if it's up in the air at this point. It looks like Dune is going to be coming out in theaters. But still, the marketing to me it just doesn't feel like it's there, like it's very present. That's why I said they should hire Ryan Reynolds. That guy can market anything. Guy's got Mint Mobile. He's got his aviation gin. His free Guy out. came out as dominating the box office two weekends in a row. Free Guy got pushed back. How long have we been watching Free Guy trailers? You know? Not the only movie, Dune. This it movie doesn't... comes out in two months today or yesterday. I think, but like, free guy is like. I think you need a free guy. I think we need a free guy. We need a free guy as a society. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's tough, and it's like it's like we're kind of back, but like we're not really there yet. And there's just so many other variables with the dual releases, and everything seems like it's always changing. But it seems like it's kind of on the uptick. But I don't know, man. I just at I this think- point, like you said, like obviously you want him to be rewarded this movie to be rewarded especially if it is that good you know to be rewarded with some good box office numbers but at the end of the day if it's not but we still get part two then at least we get to see the whole vision 
And like you said, like what you said about Zendaya's character being the protagonist of part two, I think that's definitely a good way to differentiate the two because it's like when you do, when you split up uh, the movie into two parts, it's like you kind of, I kind of like that idea of having a different, like a different protagonist or a different Different type of story to tell, different perspective within that two parts. And I think it'll keep it fresh and keep, uh, and just uh, you see both sides, yeah, and just get more hype going into part two. But man, oh man, I just want this movie to come out already. I just want to see it. What well, What do you think about the idea of stretching it into a trilogy? Did you guys see those comments that he uh, he has plans? Not that he has plans, but that he's contemplated the idea of adapting the second book into a third movie, which is a shorter book. I'm not too familiar with it, but it, it takes place, I think, ten to twelve years after the events of Dune. So he's going for the next Star Wars and Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Well, <laughs> he also made the comments that the original plan was to shoot the movies back to back, but he's glad they didn't because that would have been exhausting and that he doesn't know how Peter Jackson did it. Three movies. <laughs> back to back to back. I would like that if it's... It depends when part two comes out. It seems like it might be couple more years right because he's just finishing up the script now and if it is a yeah, time- still working on the script so if it is a time jump too within the third then maybe once that's done let it breathe a little and come back later it, it all depends to see how these movies do and that kind of stinks but that's that's the business it is crazy now having to worry about how your movies gonna do when back like two years ago i think this movie does over over 200 easy <laughs> that's not great <laughs> opening weekend Oh. Stop going to oh. opening weekends. Isn't that what you, yeah, all, you, isn't that what you debate weekend. on, opening weekend? Just like what the big debate is? No, I mean... It, for, well, yeah, opening, no, opening weekend's a good debate. But then totals is, as well. To- I mean, look at Avatar. What would be your total numbers? Avatar is just sustained for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, just 80s. 80s. 77? I never know, like, the long run, like, what's a good number. I just know, like, the opening weekends, what well, would be a good number. the ultimate benchmark is 1 billion. So the closer do you a are billion? to 1 billion is... Billion's not even cool anymore. <laughs> no, it's really not. So many movies have crossed a billion. Dune in normal times, I think we would have been satisfied with 700. Mm. You know, like yeah. 650 to 700. Opening weekend, nice solid 80, 85. A Mission, Mission Impossible numbers. That's yeah. what Mission Impossible does every time. Mission Impossible never sets records, but they, they're always going to consistently movies, yeah. open with their 80 to 90 and get to 650, 700 every movie. The budget keeps going up. <laughs> yeah. You see that stunt? That yeah. leak? Was that a leak or they just posted that? I'm not sure. Yo, do you think, we've talked about this before, but now that it just it, it's after these numbers for box office, do you think we're going to start getting to the threshold where they start like lowering budgets for movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It, it, you they'll think it, no it's got to happen sooner or later, right? Yeah, they'll like, have no choice. If movies are making barely $200 million, like We're not seeing it yet because a lot of these movies have already been made. Yeah. What but do you think? I, but the percentage of high budget movies that are actually good are not that, not that high. It's a lot of waste. I feel like mm. you can make great looking movies, great epics on lower budgets. They should be lower. <laughs> they should already be lower. And a lot of the yeah. resources go to like how much it fucking uh, I don't know. What's like a terrible movie with a huge budget? Like Mortal Engines. Right. Um. What's the Mars movie? John Carter. Disney's John Carter. That's the ultimate yeah. example. $150 million budget. I don't even think it made $200 million worldwide. Jeez. It's just <laughs> an epic failure. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe the budget should already be lower. <laughs> Hollywood's like, no, we'll get it. <laughs> Save we'll the money. It for, later. <laughs> Save the money for like shit that's going to bang. Right. That's the process of movie making, right? You never know if it's going to bang or not. Well, what do you guys think about Spider-Man No Way Home? You think that's going to bang? Oh, it's going to fucking bang. Bang. No, it's going to fuck. Bang. It's, it's going to fuck. Bang, yeah. easily. So you did see the trailer leak. Can you show us? Tell us? Paint a picture? There was nothing. Spider-Man's in it. Yeah. It was it's, it was hard to even watch. You couldn't really see anything. I don't think a lot of it wasn't fully rendered. Okay. So. I think Disney paid him to not talk about it. Disney got to your family? I really couldn't see until, like, I, I had no idea, like, the Defoe and right, Jamie yeah. Foxx and... You're doing a great job. Alfred Molina. <laughs> like, I didn't I didn't see that from the trailer because I just literally couldn't see it because it was, like, on a TikTok, but the TikTok was a screen that was far in the background, and it was it was just terrible. Yeah, it was like somebody recording a recording of it, right? Yeah. So, How does something like that leak? 
You would think it's got to be like on purpose, right? Like to get hype about it. No, you don't dude, think so. It's like when an album used to leak back in the day. It's just because somebody some asshole got was it packaging the CDs and they slip one out and they put it on the fucking internet. Yeah. You know, LimeWire that shit. Forgot that that kind of shit used to happen, man. If you had dude. a buddy and like with like like if if like, if you recorded a an, a CD and I leaked it, <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> like a dick. <laughs> yeah, you're an asshole. What the hell? You do that, though. Probably lo- it, Rappers probably lost a lot of money from that. You have to think how many people are seeing the movie before it comes out. The trailer, yeah. like Aaron said, that it wasn't even fully rendered. It had some half-finished CGI. Just some intern on his cell phone. It could have been fake, too. Asshole. I don't know. Yeah. But obviously... But those screenshots look like... Yeah. Can I spoil a trailer? Is that a thing? I mean, at this point, it's a, the whole topic is about the trailer leaking. So. so there's Doctor Strange and everything, and I think part of it was they do seem to deal with the... Doctor mis- Strange was in the leaked trailer? Yes. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Sorry. Um, you guys have seen that coming, though, no? The, the, the basis, <laughs> like the beginning... Yeah. <laughs> it's been announced for years. Yeah. It seems like before it gets crazy, like the, the basis of the movie is going to be Peter trying to deal with people knowing his identity. Interesting. And trying to get away with, like, or trying to, like, prove he's innocent with the Mysterio business. Um, And I think he goes to Doctor Strange for help, and then, like, with doing a spell, that would protect his identity again or something like that. I kind of hope they don't... I hope they don't harp too much on that, though. The identity thing? Yeah, I kind of hope they, like... You just want the multiverse. Yeah, I I just want them to squash that. You don't want the storyline they set up all the whole last movie. I want want the storyline that I got... We're a half hour in, in and Peter's still like, (laughs) I need to protect my self-identity i'm like where's garfield yeah that could be an interesting way they bring it in that there's a spell that conceals his identity and maybe that has something to do with uh yeah, maybe, why would they maybe all come it makes in, him though? toby yeah but why would all of them come in though i don't know they gotta have a good answer for it i think they will i'm most excited as excited as i am to see garfield and toby i'm so excited to see willem dafoe as green goblin once again i hope he's someone that they manage to stick around you know it's he was kind of like really, J.K. Simmons. Really dead, though, right? right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So... The butler says... Ice, uh, <laughs> well, they there could be a variant timeline where the glider doesn't kill him, as we've seen by Loki, right? Oh, There's true. now an infinite amount of all of these different characters. That's annoying. Yes, it is. You should have just chilled. Should have just chilled? Yeah. Who, Loki? Feige. Feige? <laughs> well, I like this shit. Too many possibilities. I now. like the the endless amount of possibilities. It's fun. I hope, like, my cousin is afraid that they're going to just use it as a uh, kind Cop of... Cop out? A, yeah, a mulligan. No matter what. Right. They fuck something Breakfast up. Breakfast well, it's <laughs> All right, let's move on to the U.S. weekend box office. That was Spider-Man. Hopefully we get a real trailer sometime this week. Uh, our top five for the weekend. Once again, Free Guy, 18.7 million. Number two, Paw Patrol, the movie, thirteen million. <laughs> Are you movie. serious? <laughs> That's a good movie. I've heard good things. Um, Jungle Cruise, six point two million. <laughs> Don't <laughs> breathe two five million and respect three point eight million. You I seen cannot that? believe they made it. Don't breathe two. Did you see the promotion they were doing at Applebee's with Jungle Cruise? It's like a jungle drink for a dollar. It's like spend twenty dollars and get a free move ticket to Jungle Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> We should have done that. I feel like me, you, and Nash went there. We could have got fucking. We could have got the whole theater. Yeah, hey, you kidding me? <laughs> Two for twenty deal. <laughs> When's the last time you've been to the bees? I've been. You know, since football season. I think for the wings. Did you say that the other day? Something about Outback. I was like, oh god. Yeah, I want to go to Outback go for some Outback baby back ribs right now. What? Well, what was the topic? Oh, uh, U.S. Weekend <laughs> box office. <laughs> uh, free guy again. Good, good. Did you say sixteen point eight? 18.7. Yeah, it makes sense. I feel like, what do you think consistently does the best at the box office? Besides, like, Marvel movies, but, like, genre-wise. I feel like it's horror and comic book movies. Uh, comedy movies. So Sometimes. Really, there is, like, comedies that, like, are so well, as well received as this one. So, it makes sense. Everybody wants to laugh, man. It's kind of been, like, a light... And Ryan Reynolds. This was a good sure. movie. Very worth your time. You looked at me when you said it. Was that just... Because I want you to go to the <laughs> fucking movies. Did you see <laughs> Don't Breathe 2? No. I haven't either. The first one was really good. Did you, did you see that? 
Yeah, but I don't like the idea of the second one. <laughs> I don't know why they made a second one. Apparently, it's one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> it could yeah, be. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's getting bad reviews. Yeah, but it made money. The first one did, at least. Mm, yes, it did. The first one was very good. Paw Patrol, though. That's funny. Was that what, making 13 million? Release? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't th- I, actually, I don't know. I don't know if well, it was What's Nickelodeon streaming release. service? Paramount. Is it Nickelodeon? Yeah, it's Paramount. Oh, wow. I'm not sure if Paw Patrol is Nickelodeon. Do, don't you be. have a kid? You have a niece? Not yet. A niece, yeah. Not yet. You're a fucking psycho. Well, you see the uh, Pfizer vaccine was FDA approved. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, I might, I might hop on it, man. I, told, I wasn't going to do it until I got FDA approved. Okay. I think the FDA... I think the <laughs> F... What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, of course, right. I think the FDA approval might help, like, just the world get back to normal now. I think a lot of people are going to get the vaccine now. Because it's FDA approved. You know it's a week until... Well, you guys trust the FDA? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> what has the FDA ever done? <laughs> the conspiracy TikToks about the <laughs> FDA. Yeah, the Who's FDA. running the FDA? Right, Who's behind right. it? <laughs> you know the Illuminati is tied in th- with the FDA? <laughs> it's Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> Man's behind everything. Yeah, Don't Breathe 2 was made for a budget of $15 million. It's already made 27 so... As bad as it is... It's making money. It's one of those movies that... No... Like, God, you're just capitalizing on the first, the success of the first one. Don't breathe too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so stupid. You know what's fucked up is that in Don't Breathe 1, I actually was pretty scared at some time. It was actually yeah, a scary it's movie. it's terrifying. Imagine yourself being in that house. This blind soldier. This blind assassin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, that was an interesting idea. Because it was like, well, these kids are shitty because they're... Robin is old man, but it's like right. this kind of old war veteran <laughs> who's blind. It's like, oh, that's mean. But then he's even worse, and it's like now I'm rooting for these 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 young kids. In his defense, though, they were robbing him. N- no, yeah, right, but like also, I don't feel like you, you remember. Know, he was also committing. Yeah, there was like the, <laughs> there, were, there were crimes being committed. The kidnap and forced insemination. I don't think you remember that aspect of it. It's like, yeah, don't rob, like, once yeah, before you know that, it's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. mean. But then you're like, oh, this guy sucks. I think if he wasn't, if he wasn't blind, I wouldn't feel as bad. It's just the fact that he's blind is why I feel like, is why I actually do feel bad for I him. I would never want you on a jury. Why? I just want you far away. I'm fair. I actually, I, I just sent back my questionnaire to, for uh, jury duty. I got a letter in the mail, like, a week ago. I did too, dude. I need to send that back, actually. You can get in trouble for that. I know. Mm, they can't prove back. anything. <laughs> I'm gonna take Aaron's word for it. it <laughs> Roll the dice with confidence. Roll the dice. Yeah. I never got it. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I remember uh, I got one when I was young. Like, I can't prove that. I'm dying. I don't want to say anything. Actually, dying to get on jury duty. I want Why? a murder. I want a murder case so bad. You're gonna get, get like get a one. fucking. I want a murder case so bad. My uh, brother-in-law's dad man? once got a murder case. You and know what? He's like, I think my dad sent this innocent man away to jail. For <laughs> <laughs> Twelve angry men. You barely, you never get that. Like what? Like, okay. It's a good movie, right? Classic. But uh, every time I like when I watch it, like I think I watch it for the first time in school or wherever. Like, why is it on this guy's fucking? Why is it his job to prove the innocence of somebody? Wasn't it the lawyer's job? It's the lawyer's job. And he's going on all about. He's reenacting the thing, trying to prove this guy's innocent. Bad lawyer. Good for good for him yeah, for finding out the truth, but that's not that's not the jury's job description. It's a commentary on public defenders. Ah, man. Some are good; they're overworked, man. <laughs> but can <laughs> you, you know that's a public defender? Realistically, are you allowed to just use evidence that you create, like not create, but you deduce in the jury meeting room that the lawyer hasn't presented? You can't. I don't think you can do that. Like an o- <laughs> like if OJ. The, like the prosecution didn't really do anything like they do deliberate isn't based, that what it's called but it's based off the deli- evidence yeah. you're given they basically they they've That's investigated what I'm they, themselves they can't do that though as the uh, evidence wasn't admitted into court well why don't you guys stop ruining a classic <laughs> we could just speed through these last two stories and then get to fan questions i, feel bad I always felt OJ, bad yeah. for the guy who had to go to the yankee game <laughs> me too and the rains well at least it rains like well it looks like you're not going to the yankee game now yeah, good. That is, yeah, that was good. That was good of God. Now you can go to Will Call and get a sticker refund and go to a different Yankee game. Well, what do you guys think about this next story? Cowboy Bebop, live action, first look. We'll speed through. I'm excited time. about it. Tell you what, Chief, I've never seen it. <laughs> do you guys know anything about Cowboy Bebop? Space Cowboy. See you, Space Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Whatever. They're beatboxing? No, they're not beatboxing. Is that beatboxing a good one? is a form of jazz music. Next anime? Do-do, 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 do-do. It's a quick anime, only 24 episodes. Cool. Maybe I'll watch it before the Netflix show. Yeah, look at that. I think it's going to be a difficult to capture this in live action, man. The aesthetic of the show is so just specific. You're not an advocate for that, right? For animes turned into live action? Looking at these images, it's cool that they're all dressed like they're dressed in the anime. And I, John Cho looks cool, but it's giving me bad vibes. Well, what's, I was more excited well, when they... Death did Note the, was the other example of Netflix anime adaptations. Yeah. So that's not great. But this looks like they're trying to go the opposite direction of what they did with Death Note, being a bit more faithful. But still, it's, even if your intentions are good, which I don't think they were with Death Note, but here I think they are, that doesn't mean that the show is going to be good. That doesn't mean it's going to translate well. You, uh, Cowboy Bebop, like I said, it's only 24 episodes, but it's a, it's sci-fi. They're in space a lot, and they're flying around, and a lot of the cool action set pieces take place with people on ships battling each other. And it's it's a big anime for as short as it is. Animes are very unique, like, to itself. You know, like, it's made... Animes are made for, like, cartoon. They and, really are, man. You know, they're not made to be put into live action. It's hard to recreate that swagger, especially this one. This is the most swagged-out anime probably ever. Just the, the way they do music. it, like, the short clips, like, of the face. Like, they'll, like, go to a face, and it's, like, the way their eyes are when they're crying. It's just, like, that's anime. You know, right. you can't do that. You can't show that in live action there are certain movies where I watch them and I think oh this is a live action anime but that's never the intention right Right. so when you intentionally try and recreate an anime through live action sometimes it comes off as a little silly. try hard <laughs> right yeah as cosplay almost well we have another announcement oh, right? that's, so, that's so true cosplay that's how I felt with Avatar it was just cosplay oh yeah <laughs> that is the definition of cosplay yeah. holy moses Black Canary movie coming to HBO Max. Journey Smollett. Journey. Teenage Gurney. Halleck. It's not even Journey. She will be reprising her role. <laughs> <laughs> she will be reprising her Just role as Black Canary it. for her oh, solo film on HBO Max. That's. I thought she was awesome in Birds of Prey. Yeah, I did like. I mean, obviously Harley Quinn was the star of the show, but I think the supporting characters were great. Uh, I think Black Canary and Huntress were the ones that popped out. I think. It seems to be a, not a trend, but like a focus for HBO Max and Warner Brothers to do more original content for HBO Max. Movies that would typically be shown in cinemas are going to just be available for streaming. And I guess that's the advantage you get. I- I'm wondering, like, they're doing this with Black, uh, no, we're talking about Black Canary. They're doing this with Batwoman, Batgirl. Batgirl. As well. Wow, I'm all over the place today. But, um... It's interesting to see like the effort and kind of budget and what goes into these HBO Max only movies. Um, are they going to be this, g- given the same attention and focus as if they were just going to be a regular release or are they going to be just a little bit less? So I assume that they would be, especially when you're trying to build your HBO Max because it's still relatively new. And I'm sure they're doing this with other films, but it seems like their focus right now is going to be on DC-related stuff and their more popular properties to kind of build that library of HBO Max originals when it comes to films. Ted? Yeah, I think you both hit on the head. Awesome. Let's go to fan questions. (laughs) (laughs) That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. This question here from Jack of All Trades. What's the worst theater-going experience you've ever had? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I've had some terrible ones. Most recently, it was Rocky, uh, Creed Two. It's like where I physically got up and confronted like these group of like. Hey, you told us about that on the pod. Yeah, and honestly, I think they weren't. It wasn't like the worst, but it was like the first time like I've actually was like I need to fucking say something to these these people. Saw two. Oh. It was during a scary scene, or it was it's a throwback? It you was were in th- theaters for Saw Two. Yeah. It was during a scary scene. Was it Saw 2? I was with Elena. I don't, I don't think it was Saw yeah, 2. Yeah, that then. was not Saw 2. That it was, was one like of the Saw, Saw movies. 20. 
It was one of the Saw movies, but we were. it was a scary scene, and all the lights cut out in the theater. <laughs> the whole power went out. It was, I actually got fucking scared for a second. But then, okay, like, that's because you're just a coward. But, like, the generator came on, and then the lights came on, but the power was out, so we had to leave. I don't think I really had too many. Like, obviously, you had people talking, people, like, being You get annoying. it into horror movies. Um, yeah, because it's usually a lot of kids. Yeah. I love when a group of kids come in, and they're, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> that happened just recently with the Green Knight, and when we went to go see A Quiet Place Part 1, and I was like, good, good for you guys. Yeah, those uh, Quiet Place kids were outstanding, well-raised. I never really had, like, an instance like that where people were being annoying. Like, the worst I've ever had was, like, a text, maybe, a texter with his phone out. I think it's, like, so looked down upon now. It's just, like... It really is. We had a woman at La La Land answer her phone twice. Really? Yeah, and by the second call, everyone was, shh, shh, leave the theater. And she wouldn't leave. She was just like, I'm in the movies. I'm in the movies. I can't talk right now. (laughs) <laughs> what, are you, what are you even answering for then? It is uh, the rare time when it is like an, like a uh, an uh, a nuisance, but it's like a funny nuisance. It's like okay, you right, have yeah, one where yeah. you walked out before. No, you walked out of theater on, on a movie, right? Never. No, I thought I heard. I thought you told the story where you have. Or may, oh, may, maybe you you almost did it. Assassin's really? Creed almost. But by the time I realize this movie's horrific, I want to walk out. It's already like an hour in. Yeah, so let's just finish. We'll just sit here. Yeah. Maybe take That's the thing, like, which streaming to, I think... You can just turn it off. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more DNFs. <laughs> this question here from Ryder Fletcher. Like, if you hated Reminiscence, like, you probably like, oh, I could probably turn this off and watch, like... I did turn it off 30 minutes in, but then I went back. I was like, Yeah, it would, it's it's still, I still don't <laughs> like not finishing. Yeah, I'll know that I didn't finish. Uh, Ryder asks, should I watch Sopranos for the first time? Does it hold up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I might watch it for his third time. Many na- many saints coming out soon. That's a lot of people I'm, have been rewatching it for that. Yeah, that's why I'm, I might rewatch it for that. I just love watching. Like, there are certain shows that just pop up on my YouTube recommended, just random scenes. That's one of them. And yeah. Just every time you pass, you just click YouTube one. Show. That and Always yeah. Sunny. It's like I basically rewatch the whole show through those just random clips I see. I could go on HBO Max and go to Sopranos and go to any season, any episode, and just turn it on and watch. Yeah, it's one of those shows. It, do, it does that so well, where every episode stands alone, but there's a story in each season. And when I do, I'll end up watching, like, eight episodes from that point on. I think when I saw and the I'll stop, and then I'll go back and do season two. I'll start at three and go watch, like, all of season two. Right. <laughs> when I saw last week was the Columbus one. It's so fucking yeah, funny. It is hilarious. <laughs> Great episode. <laughs> Fury, I was like, oh, I don't like Christopher Columbus. Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all pissed at him. <sighs> Fiora's pissed at the people that don't like Columbus, but then he's like, you know what? I don't like Columbus. <laughs> he's from the north. They always look down on us. And they're all like, all right, well, keep it over there. <laughs> <laughs> this question here from Nell. Who should play Poison Ivy in Gotham City Sirens? Um, the easy answer is Jessica Chastain. Oh. I'd like to I'd like to get the uh, an unknown. You know, with Birds of Prey, I mean Mary Elizabeth Winsett I knew of, but Journey Smollett I I wasn't too familiar with. Uh, I enjoyed the the young actress who played Cassandra Kane. I like when movies go with unknowns. Give me those. Give me uh, audition like twelve hundred people. Then give me a short list of seven. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple famous people on the short list. Right. That's what like Marvel's known for. And then give me a bunch of unknowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tom <laughs> Holland. Look at Tom Holland in the early days. It was oh, Asa Butterfield or Dylan O'Brien's going to play Spider Man, and then they just plucked out Tom Holland, and he's the best Spider Man ever. Yeah. So I always enjoy that. Give it young blood a new chance. Yeah, uh, fresh chance. Poison Ivy. Do they really have to make her that sexy in Arkham games? <laughs> yeah, she's she's bad. She was sexy. In she had me returns. rethinking my whole crusade. What your anti nature? No, just as Batman. Oh, like maybe she should get a pass. Like uh, <laughs> she's trying to repopulate. Let the her and Harley Quinn kill me, just so I can get the uh, little extra cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> right. This question here from Kevin Oakey. Well, do you guys have any suggestions? Any famous people? Uh, I don't know. Amy Adams? Sophie Turner? Eh, not <laughs> terrible. <laughs> not bad. Have you guys ever been to Top Golf from Kevin Oakey? I just went, actually. I always wanted to go. I just never had the chance to go. Got a lot of fun. From Ted? Oh. Where is that located? Holtzville. Is that in Nassau or Suffolk? Suffolk. It's, uh, it's like three exits past Jake's 58. 
So it's like exit like 65 off the LIE. It's not too bad. It's like a 35 minute ride. Long, Top golf is really long fun. way, bro. We only got in because we, uh, Elena's friend's boyfriend knows the, one of the managers there. He's good friends with him, and uh, he got us on like get, like the wait list early. Mm. We were number seventeen, and by the time we got there, because we had an hour and a half wait when we put it in, when we got there, the list was at like forty, and we went there on a Saturday night two weeks ago, and it was a three hour wait to get in. Really? Yeah. So you gotta make a reservation. It's a hot new thing. Yeah. It's it's, it's a lot of fun though. It's, it's bowling with golf. So yeah, like, yeah. they serve you. The food's amazing. Get drinks, right? Yeah. It's like mini golf. Yeah, kind of. You play a lot. Of, you play games on the thing on the but screen. You just, you just. They have the clubs there too, breaking. so you, you, you like you don't gotta bring clubs. Yeah. It's nice to have your own little driver, though, right? Yeah, I brought my set. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> this question here from Jay Cuds one: Read Dune or watch the movie first, and why? I, think I read, read Dune. I think reading it is better, honestly. You don't like my method? No. I like Watch the movie, and then if you like well, it, we're going to have more. to review the 1980s Dune, so your method's about to be shot to shit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can do it by yourselves. <laughs> I, I am really glad I've, that I finished the first half, at least. No, dude, it's fun, because even watching the 1980s Dune and just after reading the book, because I had watched that Dune before reading the book, so I kind of watched it when I was going through my Lynch phase and thought, this is stupid. This is not like his other movies. And uh, and then I read the book, and then watching the movie, I was like, wow. That was a wild tweet, by the way. That it's a good movie? It great. is. You said great. Did you say great? I said very good. Very good, great. It's the same thing, really. No, I great's, appreciate it great's above very good. I think reading it makes more sense only because, not, not that it makes more sense, but I think it would be a fun experience because it is such a dense book. It's so much to take in. Yeah. By the end of it, you're going to be, you're going to feel relieved that you finished it. You're going to enjoy it. Definitely, it's a very good book. But w- I, I don't know. I think it would be fun for people to watch it come to life on theaters with the prior knowledge. Especially a, especially a book like Dune, with so much in it. Yeah. There's so much to elaborate on. There's so many ways you can go with it, and every character has a backstory that they're uh-huh. not going to be able to hit on all of it in the movie. So you would you'll think, have that additional information. Honestly, after re- like when you read the book and they tell you that they're going to make a movie on it, you kind of like worry that they're not going to get, like they're not going to hit on everything. Yeah, that's always a legitimate concern. You know they can't, but it's it's a matter of how how much time are they going to give to some of these characters that are important to the story. But like you said, you only have a certain amount of time, so you can't hit on everything. But was even, that pre- like I said, watching the 1980s Dune, it was it was giving me chills. Like I wanted to rewatch it right after finishing it because I'm just such in a Dune mode, yeah. you know. So it was cool to just see Dune alive and happening rather than in my brain. I have a question. The fight scene is so funny. Fight scenes are so funny, actually. The, the you know, like in the trailer, the one when they like, they kind of re. What yeah, they yeah, use? Josh Brolin. But like in the old one, that kind that scene is just. They uh, similar dialogue too. It's just a funny scene. <laughs> well, that technology, the Holtzman shield and the original Dune, doesn't look great. But I'll tell you what, for an 80s movie, a lot of it does look good, even for the uh, for the, for now. Yeah. The worm looks good. I still find so it hard cre- to like, watch. Even just like... Just... Yeah, you would have been... <laughs> <laughs> and when we talk about it, too, like even thinking about like 2001 or Solaris, which I just like watched, so it's fresh in my mind, it's like... Solaris wasn't like too much, like you didn't really need too much special effects or anything like that but right. like i feel like when you when you when you're relying on more practical and have to make those regular sets like even that space station there and their ship like you could still like you can just rely on other things like you don't have to use the special effects and i feel like we've kind of gotten away from that oh yeah definitely this question here from matt sampson one best baseball movie i loved 61 mm. when i was a kid i watched that movie all the time either rookie or the year <laughs> or Angels in the Outfield Field of Dreams I was never yeah, a Field too. of Dreams guy growing up Field. Kevin it's Costner's per- amazing in that I, I, know, like I say, <laughs> it's the perfect Costner movie like that's what he's been chasing like that's what, just what he's he chasing is. that yeah. yeah I'm sticking to Angels in the Outfield I'm gonna go with Moneyball oh yeah Moneyball is I can rewatch Moneyball all the time what are, can, I like, love that movie. League of Their Own is another great one it can happen 61, though, like, just being a Yankee fan growing up, like, Mantle and Maris, these just iconic figures. And Watching that battle, yeah. That'd be sick. Didn't you guys like the other day say it wasn't legitimate because he had more games than Ruth? 
Well, he's I'm still like a babe guy, but come on. And at the end now, they got to change that ending because at the end they show Mark McGuire breaking the record and hugging Maris's family. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, yeah get that fucking footage out of there. Why? Because Mark McGuire's a cheated. Juiced out of his he skills. He's juiced. Who cares? So you don't... You I'm, all, I'm all with Every juicing. baseball writer? I'm all with juicing. <laughs> me too. But like... I'm not with juicing because we've seen Kidding me with Bonds, got Sosa, rid of it. Nobody can even come close to sixty. McGuire, I know, but like that. When you think of baseball, like the great eras of baseball, the steroid era was it, baseball was king. I know. The Bonds, Sosa, McGuire era, like come on. I just in my mind, I'm. I don't care that much about it, but in my mind, those guys they don't count. It's still Maris and it's still Hank Aaron for me. Like I said. The record books are the record books. Nobody gives a fuck. There's not an asterisk like Ruben doesn't consider this or Bo doesn't consider this to be legitimate. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck what I think. Yeah, but, but if Otani hits 62, point. that would be huge for me. As a sports fan, I would say, oh, oh my God, I never thought I'd see somebody crack 62. Those guys truly do. Every he's a fucking MLB pitcher, show, though, bro. That's, so. what's he, that's what's even like crazier. He's a pitcher. I consider your he's MLB nuts. The Show records more legitimate than <laughs> Ron McGuire and Sammy Sosa. <laughs> no, the pitching thing is... With Babe Ruth, that's the major difference, right? Babe Ruth was pitching, and then he decided to hit. No, not at the same time, no. No, that's what I'm saying. He's, he didn't do them at the same time. Otani's just doing them. Didn't Babe Ruth play the outfield, too? Well, they would, on his days where, like, yeah, some yeah. of his off days, they'd put him out there. They'd be like, can you hit a home run this week? <laughs> be like, all right. Yeah, Otani's a freak, man. Glad nobody knows who he is. This question here from Matt Sampson again. Last question. Thanks, Matt. Favorite NBA playoff series that wasn't LeBron or the Knicks? <laughs> Don't have a lot to choose from for the Knicks. Yeah, tough. <laughs> but LeBron's, those are like all my favorites. <laughs> but I've got one. Uh, 2009 Boston Celtics, Chicago Bulls. KG was hurt. Derrick Rose was a rookie. It went seven games. Ray Allen and Ben Gordon were just absolute flamethrowers that series, dude. They were just, one would score 40, then the next game, the other one had 40. Game seven, I'm pretty sure, went to OT. Like I said, D. Rose was a rookie. That's where he really came on the stage and established that he was going to be a, a premier player. So that's one of my favorites. Last year's Nuggets Jazz when Murray yeah. and Mitchell were flamethrowing each other. That was Goku Frieza. The Trailblazers, but Dame, Dame Lillard puts on a show in the playoffs, dude. I know, man. He's so fucking He's sick clutch. to watch in the playoffs. I'm trying to think of a good one. Russ, too. I think recently the most like memorable one was probably the Warriors Thunder when they came back from three one. Yes, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, that was really exciting. Both teams were so stacked; they were both playing so well. I, I think uh, two thousand ten Lakers Celtics was a great series. Seven games. Yeah, by four I points. mean games like even though it was such a low scoring game, that, like that, that game tr- seven though was that was an old school game seven. Yeah. <laughs> the Knicks. What's the best Knicks playoff series? Yeah, no next. We took we've one on the had, Hawks. <laughs> we've had like six in our lifetime. We took one on the Hawks. Well, the, the Celtics <laughs> series was nice too. Yeah, yeah, when we went up 3-0, started talking that shit, and they came back <laughs> two games, and we were panicking that they were going to come back from that, 0-3. Was, was that the year that well, – what, what year was it when JR won the six-man? That was that year. Yeah. Yeah, we were two. We were the two-seed, Celtics were the seven. We went up 3-0. I mean, the Pacers series was good. Obviously, we lost, but – That old Pacers team was nice, bro. Roy Hibbert fucking killed the Knicks. The Western Conference has had so many good series over the years. They've been so stacked since I've been a fan of the NBA. I would say 06 Finals is one of my favorites too. Watching D. Wade just for four games pick apart the Dallas Mavericks. Poor guys. (laughs) That was a fun one. But yeah, shout out to LeBron for keeping me sane throughout the Knicks being horrible. I just watched highlights of Wade on the Olympic team. He was fucking a problem, bro. Yeah, I think was, it was I think it was the 06 Olympics. Was, oh, wait. was it Olymp- oh, wait. oh wait Olympics? Yeah, when he was right, bald. He was a problem, yeah. Yeah, he shaved his head and went crazy. <laughs> that team was uh you were tagging me in videos. Yeah. Like, we were I think that's why I tagged him. I think it was people. that one. <laughs> yeah, I I love that clip of the Braun block. <laughs> it was like he almost started a world war. <laughs> you put that man's ball into the hard point, the the hardwood. It's funny because they always debate what's the better team, 08 or 2012. What? Of six for the no for the Olympics, oh. two thousand eight, two thousand twelve, because two thousand twelve, you don't have kid, you don't have a prime Kobe, he's kind of on the back end there, even though he's still very good. But you add in Durant, you still have Chris Paul, Westbrook. Yeah, 
It's a shame Curry never got on one of those teams with all the. No. You know what sucks? I hope by next Olympics come around, like you get the stars back. Obviously, pandemic it's... ruined it, man. We yeah. were gonna get the Kawhi, LeBron, Curry, yeah. Durant, modern dream team. Because I want that. They were all gonna play. But also, it's like the international teams are so much better now. Like it's, like, I want like an we actual, need them. like a real. <laughs> Yeah, we need them, but like <laughs> yeah. seeing them, but it's not like those. Hey, we took it down. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't. We managed to win. But it's not like having those teams like just run through everybody like it's a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm. You know. I know. Yeah. If you run into Luca and he goes off, it's like you can do it by himself. Because regardless of his team around him, if Luca goes for forty, like that's still going to be an uphill battle. Because. You might have a better team, but when you go best player versus best player, it's like if he can outperform anyone else on your team, then you know it's going to be a good game. And or when Greece gets four of the Ana de Cumpos on that, <laughs> I, I can't believe another one terrible. just made the fucking league. <laughs> I know there's another one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he made the league, but I think he's in high school. I think he got drafted. Okay. <laughs> But Canada's getting better. You like you said, you have Greece. Spain is always like just a Spain. Is, is nice. Spain and France are just like all around good. Like they have numerous NBA players. Yeah, R.J. Barrett's going to be the best player in the NBA by the time of the next Olympics. <laughs> so we're going to have to watch out on Canada. We were not ready for the foul calls, though. They were very lenient. We need those rules <laughs> in the NBA. Facts. All right, guys, that's another two podcast <laughs> for today. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you join us later this week. Uh, we may be featuring a guest on that podcast, a friend of the channel, Matt Neglia from Next Best Pitcher. But hopefully we'll have that for you guys, and, you know, we'll have some more videos. I think Ted Lasso, we're going to try and get that out this week. My Hero Academia review featuring me and Marissa. My Villain Academia was a big episode. A lot mm-hmm. of cool stuff happening to end the season. Good episode. Ted, you got to catch up. On My Hero? Yeah. I'm getting there. Yeah. S- start or catch up? Catch up. Or restart. Rest- no. Catch up. <laughs> All right, guys. See you, see you later this week. <laughs> we'll you, keep you posted. You get like a recap like every episode, so you'll be I good. love the recaps. That is true. Yeah, <laughs> you're the only person who loves the anime recaps. Well, I actually watch it for the recap, though. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.